Hey everyone, Trace here for DNews Plus. This is our last episode in our interview with Marie Haga of the Crop Trust concerning the Svalbard Seed Vault. Again, this is amazing. One of the biggest science projects in the world. I hope you've enjoyed it. We did get to go into the Seed Vault. That episode is over on the DNews channel, so make sure you go find that if you want to see what it looks like inside and learn a little bit more about it. So anyway, this is our last episode with this interview. Enjoy. Well, I, I feel optimistic about it um, because I have seen that there is a growing understanding and there are, there are positive things happening. If, we, if I'm going to look um, you know, very closely on what we do in the Crop Trust, it's excellent that we have language in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, related to the importance of, of conserving crop diversity. And it's clearly spelt out there how this is a prerequisite for food security. So, you know, seeing from our perspective, that's, that's great news. And it's really progress. Uh, if you look at it in a bigger perspective, I'm optimistic also because of the agreement that was made in Paris last year. Uh, I really think the Paris Agreement um, is a major step forward. Um, and we can see that governments now are starting to change policies based on uh, the Paris Agreement. So I think actually last year was a pretty good year uh, for multilateralism generally, uh, and certainly for those of us who are concerned about um, climate change and the consequences of climate change, and conserving crop diversity and making sure that we safeguard by the biodiversity of crops is a part of that. One of the most important green banks in the world is in Aleppo in Syria. Due to the war situation in Aleppo, the green bank cannot operate as it, as it should. The seeds are safe, um, but the land around the green bank cannot be used, so they can't duplicate seeds, they can't share seeds with farmers and breeders and scientists. So um, the, the leadership in the green bank decided that they wanted to re-establish uh, the gene bank somewhere else. And they also decided to take seeds from Svalbard, from the vault in Svalbard, because um, they and we figured it was too difficult to move seeds out of uh, Aleppo. And we have then been working with uh, the gene bank in Aleppo for quite a few years now. And almost all of their collections are copied in Svalbard. So um, they decided, and we agreed to that, um, to take seeds out of the vault in, in Svalbard and then re-establish the gene bank, partly in Morocco and partly in Lebanon. So now in September last year, um, we took out around 30,000 um, accessions. Um, and um, these seeds are now in Morocco and in Lebanon. They're being grown out there now. Um, so they will re-establish the gene banks there. And um, when they have the first yields, they then will send seeds again back to Svalbard. Um, so you will see in the vault that there are some holes in the racks. There should have been some boxes there. Um, these holes uh, are there because uh, the seeds quite simply have been shipped back or have been shipped then to Morocco and, and Lebanon to re-establish the gene bank there. So is it the first yield? Is, that the re is there like a requirement or is it it's like a bank? <laughs> here's, your, here's your loan, please pay it back with the first yield. Well, we have agreed with them that that's what, uh, that what they should do. And that's also what they want to do because of course they have now seen how important it is uh, to have the backup uh, in Svalbard. And the Aleppo example is exactly, uh, or it is, it's a good uh, illustration of what the world is for. You know, if things do go wrong around the world in a plant gene bank, the idea is that you can go here and um, retrieve, uh, retrieve it, um, retrieve the material. So ideally we want to have a copy of each accession in every gene bank in the world in Svalbard. Because uh, we can hope that things don't go wrong in the world, but occasionally things do go wrong. We have lost complete gene banks in several countries 
Um, for example, in Iraq, uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, we can also go to the Philippines, uh, where we didn't lose the whole gene bank, but the gene bank was first uh, hit by a tsunami. And then a few years later, it, uh, the gene bank caught fire. And of course, tremendously important material has been lost in all of these three um, gene banks. This was before we had the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Um, if copies had been up there, we wouldn't have lost the material. We did lose it. But now, um, with the Seed Vault being there, and with us having copies from all over the world, and ideally from absolutely every gene bank in the world, um, then uh, we wouldn't lose material if things were to go wrong in one of these living gene banks, as we call them. How do you feel about becoming this kind of icon globally as a crop trust system? Well, this, the seed vault has contributed tremendously to understanding uh, about genetic resources generally, and, and, and certainly the importance of, of conserving, it, uh, conserving it more specifically. So um, for us, you know, the Seed Vault is uh, it's a great communication platform, in addition to it uh, being fundamentally important for the future of food security. So a great idea that is, is realized and um, in, extremely important for the world. Guys, thanks for tuning in this week. I know it was a little different than usual, so let us know what you thought of this down in the comments because we really like airing these interviews and showing you the full thing, but maybe you don't. And if that's the case, let us know. If you do like it, please also let us know so the, you know, the leave campaign doesn't get all of the all of the votes like like happened recently with this thing. That we're not going to talk about it here on Dinius Plus. Anyway, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes. And thanks so much for watching.